All right, so now what I'd like to do is to use this uh, set of uh, examples here to create uh, a transaction analysis, and then we'll also create uh, some financial statements in subsequent videos. So let's start uh, with this first one, where uh, we have on January 1st, it says, John forms an engineering consulting company by investing $30,000 cash into the business. So over here I have this accounting equation set up already. So let's go over here and we'll say that since he's investing $30,000 of cash, we'll say that's $30,000 of cash here. And because this is an investment, we're also going to have $30,000 of cash into the investment section. And now remember, our accounting equation is right here, so we have to balance these two sides out. So the next, uh, on January 2nd, it says John purchases $2,500 worth of supplies for the business with cash, which includes things like wires and tools. So we know that supplies are going to go up by $2,500, and he purchased it with cash, so cash goes down by $2,500. Okay, so on January 3rd, John purchases $26,000 of engineering equipment for the business with cash, which includes computers and meters. So we know that equipment is going to go up by the $26,000. There's actually a, a plus sign here. I, f I first started writing a dollar sign, but it's a, it's a plus sign. And because it was for cash, we know that cash is going to go down by $26,000. Then on January 4th, John purchases $7,100 of supplies for the business on credit. So we know that supplies are going to go up by $7,100. And this purchase was on credit, meaning that he's going to pay back uh, whoever he got it from later. So that's a liability. If it had been for cash, then we would have deducted cash of 7100 but he's going to pay in, uh, in the future. So this is a liability for 7100 And then it says on January 5th, John provides consulting services to the city and collects $4,200 in cash. So first thing we know, cash is going to go up because we, he collected cash for $4,200. So that's a $4,200 increase in cash. And because this is services in the normal course of business, that cash is considered revenue. So revenue goes up by the $4,200. And then it says, on January 6th, John pays $1,000 in rent for the building where his consulting firm is located. So now he's paying $1,000 in rent, so we know that cash is going to go down by the $1,000. And this rent is an expense. So an expense, again, expense goes up, but because expenses are deducted from equity, we're going to write this negative sign here. And we'll say that expense was for rent. Then on January 7th, John pays 700 in salary to an employee. So it says he paid right at that, that time. So we'll say that he took it out of cash for 700 and that's also an expense because he paid it right away. So $700 goes out for a salary expense. Okay. So on January 8th, John provides consulting services of $1,600 and rents out a portion of his office to Business X for $300 and bills Business X for 1900 So now we're working with uh, it's two different figures here. 1600 in rent and 
I'm sorry, 1600 in consulting services and 300 in rent. So now we know these are revenue uh, because number one, um, he provided consulting services and he also has rent revenue. So there's 1600 of the consulting services and there's also 300 in rent revenue and he ha he's not going to receive this yet because it says that he they uh, he billed the client for this amount and he billed the client for the 1900 so we'll say the 1900 you know what I'm sorry I'm actually going to write a plus sign here because account receivable goes up by the 1900 Again, if, if it, the problem had said that he was going to collect the cash, then 1900 would have gone up in cash. But instead it said he's going to collect it in the future. So when you collect something, uh, when you collect a, an asset in the future, that's a, uh, an accounts receivable. And then it says on January 9th, Business X pays John the 1900 that it owes from January 8th. And remember that revenue was already recognized on January 8th because that's when uh, we provided the service. So now all that happens is that account receivable goes down for the 1900 and cash goes up by 1900. So all we did was switch one asset for another. And then it says January 10th, John pays $900 which he owed for the supplies purchased on January 4th. So he pays the $900 in cash, so we know that cash is going down, and it was for the supplies purchased on the, on the January the 4th, so that was supplies for $7,100, which is actually this account payable uh, right here, uh, of which he only paid $900, so $900 of that liability uh, go down. And then it says, John withdraws $600 in cash from his consulting company for personal use. So when he's withdrawing cash from the business, the business's cash is going to go down by $600. And a withdrawal, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to write a negative sign here, although technically you can say the withdrawal increased, but because withdrawals take away from equity, I'm going to write this negative sign right here. So now uh, what we want to do is we just want to uh, find some uh, sums for all of these line items here. So the sum for cash would be, and hopefully I've done my math right, 4,400, the sum for accounts receivable would be zero. The sum for equipment would be well, actually sorry, supp supplies, let's do that first. The sum for supplies would be 9,600. The sum for equipment would be just the 26,000. The sum for the liability section would be 6200 The sum for investments would just be that 30000 The sum for withdrawals would be just that 600 or the negative 600 uh, but again, even if it's a negative, we still you know consider it a sum. For revenue, we would have a total of six thousand one hundred. And last, for expenses, we would have one thousand seven hundred. So again, this is just the main example that I used uh, and then I'll use these numbers to create financial statements in subsequent videos so check those out 
and you'll get an idea of how we create financial statements based off of these numbers.